My previous video illustrated option delta, which is the rate of change of the option value with respect to the stock price and is visualized as the slope of the straight tangent line. However, when using delta to estimate the sensitivity of the option value to the change in the stock price, we're not capturing the gap between that straight line and the actual curvature of this relationship between option value and stock price. That curvature, almost all of it, can be captured by option gamma. So option gamma is the rate of change of the delta. When the gamma is high, the delta is changing quickly and a delta hedge is fragile. When the gamma is low, that is to say when the option is deeply out of the money or deeply in the money, gamma approaching zero, the delta is not changing very quickly and our delta hedge is more robust. In the lower left, I have, as usual, the input assumptions into my Black-Scholes option pricing model, or five of the six, all of them except for the stock price. So you can see the strike price is $100, so that's going to apply for the call option on this sheet and also for the put option on the next sheet. I assume a volatility of the underlying stock 30%, risk-free rate 40%. These options have a one-year term, and then they are options on a non-dividend paying stock. So in the upper left here, I plot that very familiar call option value on the y-axis against the stock price on the x-axis. So for all of these graphs, the x-axis is the stock price, and that's why it's not explicated here as an input assumption. And so this call option value, for example, for the at the money call option, that's right here when the stock price is 100 and a strike price is 100, we have an at the money call option one year term. You can see the price of that option according to the Black Scholes Merton is $13.75. And then as the stock price goes increase, we're in the money on this call option. As the stock price decreases, we are out of the money. In the previous video, I said one of the key features of this graph is nonlinear. It has this curvature, which would be okay to say convexity, but because we're talking about options, technically we can all call this gamma, and we have the gamma measure for this curvature. So if we look at that call option value, move over here to the right, then I'm plotting the call option delta. This was the focus of the, the previous video in this playlist where I took a deep dive on the option delta. The x-axis here is the stock price, and what we have for the delta mathematically is a first partial derivative with respect to the stock price. Change in the option with respect to the stock price. We also said that if you're visual, like I'm visual, I prefer the visual interpretation, then we take the whatever point we're evaluating here, we take the tangent line. There's a point of tangency, the single point where that well, this a line, a straight line, intersects with the actual value to price relationship, and the slope of that line is the delta. So that's the rate of change here. And if I go over to call option delta, where we are at the money, stock equals 100, that should be an S equals 100, then the call option delta is point zero point six one two. So that's the rate of change of the option value at this point where the stock price is 100. And so it's unitless. And our interpretation is, I'll clear this out a little bit. The interpretation is very simple. If we're here at stock equals 100, it's telling us that if the stock price increases by $1, we expect the option value to increase by 61.2 cents. Or if the stock price drops by $1, we expect the option value to drop by 61 cents. And now if we stick with the visual interpretation, because the actual option to stock price relationship is nonlinear, it has this curvature, you'll, you'll, you can see it's pretty easy to visually confirm that the slope of this line is changing. And we said a key feature of the call option delta is that's bounded at zero and one. So that if we go 
out of the money, deeply out of the money here at lower stock prices. For example, $50 stock price on a $100 strike is $50 out of the money. We're deeply out of the money. The, the uh, slope of the tangent line here is pretty much getting close to zero. So we're bounded at zero. And we, on the other hand, if we go deeply in the money, if we're up here at $150, for example, $50 in the money, as the stock price increases, that translates almost directly one for one to call option value. So we have a 45 degree line here, a slope of one, we're bounded at one. So the fact that this is curved reflects, is reflected here in an option delta that's not a flat line or not constant. So if we were to go up to, uh, if the stock were to go up to $110, then our delta is re-evaluated. Re the delta is now 0.72, meaning if the stock price at $110, $110 increases by $1, we expect the option value to increase by $0.72. Cents. And so delta itself is changing, and that's the point of gamma. Gamma is mathematically a second partial derivative with respect to the stock price. And more intuitively, it's the rate of change of the delta. And so I've plotted it here in purple. And I've uh, teased out the specific gamma value at the money here when the stock price is 100. And you can see here the gamma value is low. It's 0 0.0128. So that's the rate of change of delta. So how can I interpret that? Well, let's take an example where um, now I'm going to do a pretty dramatic jump in the stock price from 110 to one from 100 to 110, right? Let's say we do a plus ten dollar jump in the stock price, and here the gamma is 0 0.0128. Well, at 100 the delta is 0.612. The gamma is giving us the rate of change. If the stock price increases by $10, then this gamma, if we multiply it by 10, you can see is 0 0.128. I'll say 0 0.128. $10 jump in the stock price multiplied by the gamma gives us 0 0.128. What is that? That is an estimate for the rate of change of the delta. And you'll notice the delta here jumps from 0.612 to 0.726, and it's pretty close. Not exact, but it's pretty close. So gamma's giving us the rate of change of the delta. And you can see here, uh, the gamma tends to be highest near at the money. Um, in my case, not exactly. Actually, in my case, for my assumptions here, these can be changed and the shape of the gamma will change. In my case, it happens to peak not quite at the money, but at $80. But we generally have high gamma to reflect the delta is changing the most when we're here. And the gamma is low and actually approaching zero both in the money and out of the money. And so you can see visually similar, just like we did with the first derivative, we come up here to call option delta as we go deeply out of the money and that and the val option value is not very responsive to stock price change, we have a low delta. The delta also is not changing very much and gamma as the rate of change of delta is reflected here in a low value of zero. And similarly, if we're deeply in the money, our delta is approaching one, but you can see the slope of this tangent line is getting closer to uh, uh, well, this slope of this line is actually getting closer to zero, but also not changing very much. And so that's reflected in a low rate of change of gamma that's approaching zero. Another way to think about this is the way that it's, we use the gamma is that if we put on a delta hedge and we're here at high gamma, the delta hedge is fragile. As the stock price moves, the high gamma is telling us that the delta is changing quickly. So we have a more fragile delta hedge when the gamma is high. If we're over here with low gamma, it's saying as the stock price moves, the delta is not going to shift too much and our delta hedge is less fragile or more robust. Okay, so now I'll show you the put, call, uh, the put option 
and I'm going to use the same assumptions here, and that means same strike price and same term. You might recognize those are the conditions for put call parity, and that's actually going to ensure that my gamma is the same. That's right. Uh, for exam candidates, this is just meant one thing. One thing that makes our life easier. Here, if the uh, if the option if put call parity applies, then our gammas are going to be the same for the put as they are for the call. Well, why would that be? Well, you may or may not recall that put option we the call option delta. Um, now that's on the previous page was n of d1 standard normal cumulative distribution function of the d1, or I just call that short for probability function. Or remind me, my, remind us that it's bounded between zero and one. That was for the the call delta, and now I'm showing here for the put delta, and it is equal to n of d1 minus one. So in terms of the graph. All we do here for the put option delta is we shift it down one unit on the y-axis. Consequently, as, as discussed in the previous video, the put option is bounded by 0 and negative 1. But in terms of the slope of the tangent line, this is the same shape. We get the same result. Put option gamma is the, is the same here. So that very makes that very simple. And finally, just one more application just to put this in action and now I've high, I've teased out two points here stock price is 100 is shown right here you can see and stock price at 130 is shown right here so I'll just focus on the uh, on the one on the right at 130 if I can get that out okay here at stock price of 130 the black Scholes Merton that's right here about right here is $36.65, right? So we have, when the stock price is 130 and a strike of 100, we're $30 in the money. Intrinsic value is 30, so the time value is $6.65. That's our option price when the stock is 130. If the stock jumps up, let's say plus $10 to 140, here I'm just doing a repricing with the Black Shoals, I get 45.65, and that's plotted right here, right? $10 increase in stock, corresponds to this increase in the option value as I move from this point to this point, and that value increase is $9. Now, here, I'm doing, this is a Taylor series approximation, but my point is to use the delta, is to use the gamma that we've just reviewed. Um, the change in the stock price here as I go from 130 to 140 is $10. And so I can take the $10, multiply it by that delta at 130, and that delta happens to be 0.87, right? We're getting close to 1. And so if I just rely on delta, in other words, visually, to just rely on delta is to just rely on the straight line approximation as I go plus $10. So I'll go in a straight line, but there's, I'm going to leave that little gap. And so that's very simple, $10 times my delta. The $8.77 tells us that this is the predicted jump in the option value when the stock price jumps by $10, right? Just along the straight line. It's telling us $8.77. But that's the linear approximation. It's leaving out the curvature as reflected in the gamma. I can use the gamma. I can bring it back in with the Taylor series, and I've shown that formula here. All I do, well, let me get it out, is I've got my gamma value at 130, and to get the adjustment by applying that Taylor series, I just use, uh, oops, plus 0.5 times the gamma. That's my gamma symbol, not very good times the change in stock price squared. That's one. That's the term in the Taylor series approximation. So that's all I did here to get the 0.26. You can see this formula right up here. It is one half uh, multiplied by gamma 
multiplied by the $10 chain squared. That gives me 0.26. That's how I capture this gap that the delta linear approximation isn't getting the curvature. It's 0.26. I add that to the delta, and you see I get $9.03. Um, because I'm still using a, an approximation on inference series, I'm not including a third, fourth derivative, etc. I'm not going to get exact, but I close uh, almost all of the gap. I get very close. I get so close that, in general, we can just use a delta gamma approximation. You can see I have the 26 cents. It tells me 903. I'm only three cents off from the exact value if I repriced the uh, Black-Scholes. So that gamma measure comes into here the delta gamma approximation of the change, where here I've only used the $10 change in the stock price to estimate the change in the option value. So that's option gamma. If the video was helpful, please subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.